Hi everyone, welcome back to another Drift Cars JP video. Uh, stuck in lockdown, like I'm sure all of you are in Sydney. Um, and I was getting a bit bored, looking for jobs to do. And since having the 350Z sitting here, like I've always been pretty happy with the height of the uh, Skyline. But ever since I've had the, like I said, the 350 sitting here, I kept looking at it thinking, oh that sits much nicer, it doesn't have as much wheel gap. And then when I look at the Skyline, I'm like, oh, it's got quite a bit of wheel gap there. It's like nearly, nearly four fingers wheel gap. Whereas the 350Z is literally around about two fingers. So what I decided to buy was a set of RSR down uh, springs. So this is front and rear springs. Um, you can see there's a part, there's the part number on there. There. These are on special at the moment. Um, they're 250 bucks at the moment from RHD Japan. So it comes with a nice uh, nice sticker. I won't get the springs out. Let's see if we can just have a squeeze of one. But um, yeah, there's the springs in there. Just a black set of springs. Now these are meant to drop the car about 35 mil in the front and about two centimeters in the back. So 20 mil in the back. So what I'll do is I'll measure the wheel gut now before we do the job on it. So the wheel gut there is around about Probably an inch and three quarters, so it's about probably 45 mil to, to the actual top of the tire there. And in the rear, because the rear's already sit reasonably low anyway, so if we do the rear to the top of the tire, it's about about just just over an inch, so it's about 30 mil. So that should drop it down to the guard should be sitting right about there. So I thought we'd just um do a quick start of the video now, just to sort of get a gauge on how much it's going to actually drop the car so I'll do a step by step I'll only show one side I'll show the one side on the rear one side on the front how to do them with some uh, with spring compressors and yeah oh, like I said I've also I've ordered a front lip for it which is an auto X kits uh, front lip I'll put a picture up now of what it's going to look like Thanks for everybody who's subscribed to the channel so far and thanks for the support on the channel. We've hit over 3,000 subscribers, which is pretty good. So it's gone up around about 1,500 subscribers, 1,600 in a year, which is pretty good. So yeah, so I'll try and keep more, the content seems to be more happily based around how-to videos. So that's probably where I'm going to stick to. I'm starting to slow up with the racing because everything's been cancelled once again at the moment. Um, the 350Z, I'm going to hang on to that for a little while. We've had a few things go on with the family and stuff like that and it's just... Not worth a hassle buying and selling another car at the moment. So and I'm quite enjoying it. It's quite a nice car to drive actually. So after putting a, a new Conrad and piston in it, it drives great. Pulls hard, looks good. And yeah, I can't bring it myself to sell either one of them. So it looks like we'll keep both of them. And my son loves it. The kids love going in the front seat there too. So anyway, we'll get started on this job. We'll um, get the thing jacked up and we'll uh, yeah get into it. Um, mind the fact that it's got a strut brace on it. I have to take the whole strut brace off just to get to the, uh, the top of the strut bolts there. This side's not too bad. I don't think I should have to remove the intakes. It's just the, the 70 mil bolts inside there, which should be, shouldn't be too hard to get to. So we'll get these wheels off. Okay, now that we've got the wheel off, I'll show you the parts that we need to undo. We'll start at the top first, but I'll show you we need to take this bracket off here, which holds the, the bottom of your shock on. Take the brake line off your uh, shock as well, and also just pop off these two ABS like it's the same ABS line but just just need to pull it off like that they just pop off make sure you move them out of the way the last thing you want to do is pull on them while you're uh, pulling your shocks out because it'll uh, it'll stretch the uh, wire inside and actually give you an ABS fault and then up the top here we're just going to take this strut brace off While we're here, we can just take the brake line off, which is just a 12 mil. Pop that off. So we hang that out of the way because we're going to have to try and maneuver the shock around that once we, we get the bottom part undone. So we can undo these bottom um, pieces as well. This is the 
the tricky one. It's the angle that's on. We might put a banner on that one so we don't uh, round the head off the, the bolt. Go. Finally, some torque on that one. Take that bracket off. Get it out of your way. Now we've just got to get this uh, bolt bolt out. So might just put some uh, WD in there just to help it slide out a little bit. shock just around the brake line here which you're gonna have to remember on your way back in okay that's our shock okay shock out not too bad. It's a bit hard to get this um, this way bar end. Obviously, once it gets back to a certain point, it doesn't want to sort of go out much further than than what it actually is there, sort of thing. So you can get it to there. At least then that helps you get the shock off. But it's a lot easier you, on the V35s and the earlier kinds. You always had to take the top arm off, so which just makes things a lot easier. So here's our shock and the spring sitting on the ground. So the beauty of doing um, the RSR shocks is that you don't need to replace shocks. You can if you want to, but this sort of doesn't drop where the spring doesn't sit properly in the um, the shock. Like if you put sometimes too low of a spring, when it's at full extension like it is now, the, the actual spring will be loose in the actual body, but when they're like this, it's fine. So what we'll do, we'll get some spring compressors and we'll get this spring off. Okay, spring compressor time. Now I've never had any problems with spring compressors over the years, now touch wood. But before you pull your spring off, just, just make sure you mark. So you line up those two points. So put a mark there and a mark there to make sure you get those two parts centered so that when you put the um, the hat back on, you put it up into the car, this part's not slightly out of there and you can't get your shock back in. So make sure you yeah, just line up there and there. Now what we do is we get our spring compressors. It's gonna be a bit hard to hold the camera. Now, when you use spring compressors, you need to try and compress the longest part of the spring. Don't try and compress just these two two springs here because there's more tension between there than there is over all those th three like that. So some spring compressors are a bit hard to get in. Like these ones, like if you can drop that one into there and get this bottom one onto here. I'll we'll just see if I can, and there, uh, I'll just see if I can angle the camera in a spot where we can see. Okay. So you want to get that one in there because like I said you want to and try and if that's tucked into that where the, the spring's starting to um, seat it'll uh, help help stop the spring compressors moving because quite a lot, a lot of the times when you do do these they try and try and jump on you. Now with spring compressors always good to put a little bit of, bit of lube up on the, on the threads while it's uh, under all that force, wind the other one down. Like I said, just forgive me if I'm trying to try to get it in the camera as best as I can. Okay, so we'll get that one lined up. A bit of lube on there. If these, I'll put a little bit more spray up the top here. Now when you're taking the spring off, 
it's always good to have it angled away from your car and away from you. Now I always have myself down this end because if, if this does fly off when you undo the nut, it's going to go that way. So to make sure you don't have your car there, so you should have it just fly it fly towards the wall. So now we're sort of getting them on. So I just do them with a the rattle gun. There's no other, you know, you can do it with a spanner if you want. So you take a little bit of tension from each side, so don't just go on the way on this side. Like that. Back and forth. A little bit more on the other side, that'll probably do us. Okay, so we've probably got enough tension out of it there. Once we take this top hat off, it's not going to go flying across the room. 70mm on the end there. So like I said, do it away from yourself. So put your hand on the spring. As you undo the shot. Knock that off. Push the top that off. There might be a little bit tight on these to not try and break the seal off the off the spring. That one. The whole lot's coming off in one piece. So pull your shock out from underneath. There's your shock there. Nice and clean. If your shock's all super wet all around this area here, time to replace it. But uh, these, these are pretty good. This car's only done 100,000 Ks from uh, factory. So it's a pretty pretty low K uh, skyline, this one. And I don't use it a lot. I, I try and drive my uh, 350Z a lot now. I'm just sort of quite enjoying driving that to work. But so now we'll just attention to this same as before a little bit on each side and go take a one all the way off there's one off and there's our other one that so, there we go and take that out that's our first spring off. So we've obviously we've got to just get this top hat off. Put the top hat away like that. See our spring up that way, so you know which way is up. And we'll go and get our RSR spring and we'll compare. We'll do a quick comparison on the heights of them. Just to see uh, how much lower the actual RSR one is. So we'll grab them out of our box. So, grab these out. Nice RSR logo. So these look like... I said I haven't even taken these out of the... The pack myself so uh, that just says rear i'm assuming that's a rear and uh, not one to be a rear okay so the other two are the fronts okay so these are our front two rsr have always been pretty renowned like when i used to live in japan it was a pretty common upgrade for people that weren't even actually into cars all that much um just because they lowered the car just that amount just to make the thing look nice like all cars when they come from the factory always sit very high and don't really uh look aesthetically pleasing so yeah so there's the comparison there what we'll do is i'll, I'll sit them up against each other see which, how much difference is actually in them so you can see let me get this it's always a hard bit filming by yourself okay so you can see the height difference there they're almost about probably almost there look like about an inch lower straight away before you even put them on the car so that's pretty cool so i think they'll look pretty nice so what we'll do we'll, we'll peel our sticker off and we'll uh, start getting them fitted up it's always hate when they put these crappy paper stickers on car parts and to peel them off you get in get them off properly you're gonna go wax and grease remover because they just look crap like I probably shouldn't really worry, it's only going to be sitting in the shock anyway, isn't it really? So, but I'm just fussy, I like things to look nice. Okay, so you can see I've just given the, the shock a little bit of a clean. Just clean some of the dirt and stuff that builds up around the bottoms of the, uh, the shocks where they mount. So, sit, sit our spring in, make sure it lines up, there's a little groove there. Make sure the bottom sits into there. Now what we'll try, I, sh I assume I'll probably have to compress these a little bit to get them on, but... 
we'll see how close we actually are. I think it would be a fair way off actually. Let me see the top hat on. Yeah, so we're going to have to compress them down quite a bit. Yep. Okay, now, because I'm fussy, I'm going to get some, some rags and just put them around these uh, springs because I don't want to scratch them up too much with the spring compressors. And right where I'm going to have to put the spring compressors, right where their logo is. So what we'll do is we'll, we'll tuck them in like that. Show you what I'm doing. Let me just have enough to get that through. Now, this is the time where we need to line up the top hat. So we need to line the top hat back up where I put my mark there, and a the little uh, mark just there as well before we do it up. That way that we know it's going to sit in properly. Make sure your uh, top hat's still lined up before you undo your shock. Okay, pretty good. Yeah, the same as before, a little bit at a time. say about uh, the spring compressors <laughs> so, um, I've just broken the, broken the end off there that's all right we'll, we'll get a, a drift pin into there and we'll fix that up okay so that's our, our spring done so you make sure it sits sits right on the edge there and into the groove there and uh, yeah we're ready to go so we can throw that one back in the car okay so it's time to throw our shock back in I just started already and I forgot to turn the camera on but make sure you get it around this brake line first. So you can get it all the way up there. Moving the brake line down. Line up the top three holes first. And slide the bottom in like that. And we can start doing everything up. See our brake line back in there. Yeah. Put that back on. It's probably easier the the start is to put these uh, 14 mils in first just so then you know you've got it all lined up properly before you start doing an ink up now we'll do up our 90 mil there are 21 mil on the other side Pretty hard hit on that one, considering how tight it was when we took it out. Just lightly zip up our spray pine, and then around this side, get your ABS lines, just pop them back on, push on nice and easy like that. Okay, so that's pretty much our shock and spring in. And what we can do, we're going to jump up the top and we'll do up the top bolts as well. We've got all the top bolts done up. I didn't really film them, they're a bit of a pain to get to because they're different type of bolts to your factory ones because of the Cusco uh, strut brace. So get these done up and um, we'll throw the wheels on and we move to the back of the car. Um, so I've done both sides. So both sides are all done. Like I said, we'll uh, get the thing dropped down and I'll jack the back up. I won't show you putting the wheels on, we all know what that looks like, but 
a good time. We'll give them a colour as a little bit of a, a wipe down while I've got it apart. And um, yeah, we'll, we'll move on to the back. Okay, so we're just at the rears now. So we'll just show you one side. The, the backs are pretty easy. Literally one bolt and we drop this whole member down and the, the spring pops out. Now, what it's best to do is just get a jack just to support it as you undo it. Just get a spanner for the other side. Now these normally are a little bit tricky to get out of the actual housing. So what we might have to do is just Put a little bit of pressure on it, take a little bit of pressure off, just to get it in that right sweet spot to get it off. I'll be able to just uh, rattle gun it the rest of the way out. Just like that. Then what you want to do is just slowly, slowly release your jack. Just watch it drop down. This just takes the tension off it nice and easy. You can let your jack drop right down out of the way. You can see in there. And then we'll just, you can just literally push on this arm now. Push down. And just pull your spring out like that. That's the rear spring out. So you need to swap off the, the bottom hat. This just pops off like that. We're gonna get our new spring. So we've got a, a new spring, just give the, the bottom hat a bit of a bit of a clean. A lot of all crap crap builds up inside here. Let's give it a bit of a wipe before you put it back in. And you just sit your, sit your spring, make sure it lines up with that point there. Sit it in. You just gotta push it and get it around that point there. Make sure it's lined up. Let's get the camera so we can have a look. So make sure all that that step is sitting into the back section there of, of the of the the bottom mount and then just lift it up and then we'll get the jack on it and we'll just jack it up slowly. I want to just jack this up nice and slow, make sure. Make sure the spring sitting into its carrier properly. Make sure the bottom part's lined up too. Okay. Let's make sure it's dropped into that dip. Yep, feels fine. Okay, so we'll just slowly back it up. Hopefully you can see all right there. Just take a little bit of wiggling to get them back to line up properly, and you'll find having it, you'll have a little bit of trouble trying to get the bolt back in two of these. So just give the jack a wiggle every now and then. I feel it's got a fair bit of tension on it now. Okay, so get it all lined up. Grab our bolt wherever that's disappeared to. And you don't want to force these back in. Make sure it goes in pretty easy. Just use a little rubber mallet. Tap it all the way home. And just gotta work out where I put my nut. It's raining, isn't it? Here comes my daughter. Nelly, Nelly dinner time. So we zip this up. And drop it down. And away we go. That's that done. So what we can do now is we can move to the other side. And I'll just do exactly the same as what I've done there. And that's it. So what I'm going to do, put all wheels back on. I'll take it for a test drive. I'll give you a bit of a review on how they feel on the road. And we'll re-measure the drop and see how much the, the car's over, dropped overall. So I thought I'd do a quick height comparison. These are the two rear springs together. So you can see there's around about probably oh, about two or three centimetres difference in, in height between the two rear, rear springs. So not a, not a great, great deal of difference because 
the fronts naturally sit higher than the rear anyway, so the rear sit fairly low to start with, so the um it's more just to bring that front drop down. Right, so that's job done. I've been for a drive. Um it feels good, it's a lot stiffer. Um it gives a bit more of a harsh ride. We're just gonna do another double check on the, the height. So it looks like it's about two and a half um centimeters, one inch gap between the front and the rear. Uh, let's drop down to it's got about about the same as the right height's very uh, similar now so it's about an inch about two and a half to the wheel so the gaps dropped a fair bit but it um drives really nice it gives like a bit more of a sportier feel the cars the sky is not overly soft but it is a little bit soft on the road whereas this sort of firms it up a little bit um it doesn't feel like it's tracking or anything like that on the road i only went for a quick run tonight um it's about seven o'clock here so i managed to take all day but that's what happens with kids. It takes you all day to do one small job sort of thing. But I'm pretty happy with them. For 250 bucks. I think they're a pretty good buy. And in, if you didn't want something that overly drops the car too hot, uh, too low sort of thing. So hang on, I have to go. I'll be back. Sorry, back. That was my son. He's playing our breakfast on PlayStation. Um, he wants me to come and play. So I'll wrap the video up there. Um, yeah, it looks pretty cool. Uh, it definitely drops the front end a lot more than the rear which levels the car out a little bit more. I always found I always looked a little bit nose high on these. Um, so that said it really nice. It gives a nice look. And I th think once I put that lip on the front, it'll make the front of the car look pretty cool. So yeah, um, if this helps you do your shocks, give us a thumbs up on the video. Um, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, whether you watch my other videos, just to subscribe. If we can get the numbers up on the, the channel, I keep doing these type of videos, even though some of them are quite long. But the idea is I'm a mechanic and I would like to help people, show people how to do things the right way and save them some money as well. So anyway, thanks for watching and we'll see you on the next video. See ya. Bye.